Bonjour everyone, welcome to another Diecast Showcase. So, uh, it's another Friday, which means we're going to be checking out some of my latest Diecast finds. And it's going to be a mix as, uh, if you're a regular viewer of my channel, you probably are accustomed to. If uh, this is a first visit, well, welcome, and hopefully you enjoy this little video. Uh, so uh, we're going to have a mix here, as you can see in front of us, uh, a few store finds that uh, I've gathered throughout the last uh, week or so. And I did uh, do a quick stop at the thrift store as well, which means we are going to be checking out some Lucy's and uh, quite a few cool finds. So uh, without further ado, let's get into it. So I thought uh, I divided this into two little lots here and... Uh, Thought I'd uh, start by showing you some interesting pieces that I'm actually not going to be keeping and that are going to be for a uh, sale trade and whatnot. Now keep in mind out of the totality of the vehicles we're going to be watching, uh, we're going to be uh, checking out today. There's probably a dozen that are, uh, you know, no name, no brand, uh, fantasy slash, you know, stuff that's just not worth keeping, but still in great, great condition. So those were gifted to my daughter as I, uh, normally do with things that uh, I don't necessarily want to add to the collection but are still fun. Um, the ones that I'm going to be showing you right now are just going to be some uh, pretty much some uh, castings that uh, I'm going to be uh, selling off basically. So just going to get these out of the bag. First one we're going to be checking out is this uh, Motormax generic ambulance um you know definitely not the best conditions and uh there's a nice uh, smiley star sticker that was applied by the uh, previous uh, young owner of this casting so uh we've got the typical motor max wheels uh emergency medical services ambulance uh delivery on the side we do have on the back interestingly enough opening doors so you can open these up as you can see they're both there both present both accounted for You've got the uh, stretchers in the back and whatnot, so kind of like a little bit of a GMC vibe, maybe Chevy. Either way, GM vibes overall, I find. Definitely battered, worn, and well loved, well played with. There's your, uh, there's your base. So yeah, not uh, not something I'm gonna be keeping, but you know, still cool that it's complete, you know, and nothing's missing. I mean, despite the fact that it's kind of beat up. So that's one that's going to be going in, into the uh, generic bag of, you know, just stuff selling for cheap. Like pennies on the, pennies per cast. Um, next, uh, I've got this uh, kind of like Yatming knockoff Lamborghini Countach. Not a bad cast, honestly. You know, very cheap, no interior. Yatming looking wheels. Um... Paint's mostly all there and whatnot, but it is missing the rear wing. It's pretty clear through the two gaping holes on that uh, rear engine cover. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's in good nick. Still rolls. Suspension still works. Uh, you know, plastic base, cheap metal body. You know, proportions are kind of off, but I mean, you know, it reminds me of the proportion of the um, 80s era Matchbox uh, Countach casting. So, you know. I'm not gonna complain about that so you know the most generic base you can get made in china with some type of production code really nothing special but you know still still fairly cool so again same lot as uh, that ambulance uh, um next uh, getting into some um some uh branded castings for whatever reason i ended up with another one of these the uh generic Hero City era Matchbox limousine where these uh, double 10 spoke wheels were introduced. Great wheels, awful casting, big, big panoramic open sunroof that gives you a glimpse into the interior. I've showed this one behind. Uh, there's this exact variation in the past. It's not mint, but it's not bad. Got some inserted rear lights and license plate holder. And uh, yeah, there you go. So a limousine. 2001 license all right then we have this extremely beat up 
number 42 Texaco liveried, uh, I believe this would be, it's definitely a Dodge. Guess a Charger. So the wing era cars that didn't last very long. Broken wing, most of the paint's gone, so it kind of looks uh, like uh, the end scene of uh, Days of Thunder. And uh, interesting fact about this one, um, very hard to see, but this is actually a car that was driven by Juan Pablo Montoya of F1 fame. So, very cool. Plastic wheels, plastic body. And I mean, it's so beat up. I mean, it's not even worth poaching the wheels. I mean, I've got a few NASCAR that I'm going to be using for wheels, and they've all got, you know, most of them got rubber tires, or the tire lettering is in a really good condition in case of plastic wheels. So, this is really worn, unfortunately. You know, really looks like a crash car. You know, yeah, busted A pillar, missing A pillar. You know, it's just it it, it it's really beat up. So I'm not gonna be retaining this, but who knows? Maybe somebody can use it as a project. Staying pretty much the same realm. Got this. Uh, I think this is like the fourth color variation of this Falcon ATCC touring car that I pick up. It's a great cast. This one's pretty beat up. Looks like it's seen some track time because the wear is mostly on the wheels and on the side livery, which is definitely indicative of that, uh, you know, yellow track mayhem. Ten spokes uh, with mostly gone paint that used to be white. Probably would have kept it, honestly, if it was in uh, good condition, but this is, uh, you know, I don't need uh, color number four if it's not in mint shape, so this is going to be go into the Hot Wheels and Matchbox loose pile. Just, you know, and there was a actually an F1 sticker on the roof that I took the liberty of removing before showing this. And last piece that I will not be retaining is this vintage Majorette Ford cab over engine truck that had some type of plastic piece which is now gone. Hitch is pretty well, you know, it's there, but let's just say the plastics around to just secure the trailer in place has definitely seen better days, you know, like half chewed off and whatnot. Wheels are in pretty decent condition, except for this one. Well, actually, you know, front axle's in pretty decent condition. It rolls really well, though. You got the plastic, body, uh, plastic base on this one. So here's your base. Majorette, Ford. One one hundredth scale. There's your production number. You'll notice there's several numbers. It's because I do have this one, but complete with the uh, shell tank on the back. Still looking for the little trailer that goes with it. So, yeah, either way. Clean truck, but, uh, you know, I don't need another one of these, especially with the missing part. So, that's going to go to the for sale for trade pile. All right. So, that was the portion... Of the haul that we're not going to be retaining in the collection and we've got a doozy of a bag here with a bunch of cool stuff that we are going to be keeping so we'll get started right away and we're going to start off with a little curio that uh, was included in one of these bags that i just could not say no to keeping look at this guys uh z31 300zx it's got the v6 here zx on the side the early 83 84 lights on the rear t-tops it's a plastic body plastic base and i think this was a slot car there's a piece missing on the back so i wouldn't be able to confirm or deny that there's not a whole lot of markings on the bottom it's made in hong kong Seems to be pretty vintage. Actually, yeah, definitely vintage. 1984 licensing date. Kind of hard to see. There we go. Yeah. 1984. Play school, actually. Play school. Wow, if you guys are in your 30s or 40s, you probably remember play school with a S-K-O-O-L play school. 
But yeah, it's a cool little curio. Definitely going to keep this. Reminds me a little bit of that uh, Porsche 911 Targa that I picked up also in a uh, goodie bag. Um, yeah, so, you know, a little curiosity, basically. A little curiosity that I decided to pick up and retain. Um, other larger scale car that I actually picked up is this uh, well played with Burago 143rd scale Lamborghini Diablo. Um, no mirrors on this one, tan interior, giallo fly paint, it's got the wing, I'm not sure if it's a VT or if it's a two wheel drive version, but uh, yeah, the glass portion on this one is a little bit loose, but I mean, probably one of the better Diablos that uh, I've acquired, sticker is still there, but it's not quite nestled where it should be, either way, I mean, this thing's had playtime, and these date back to the 90s, so, I mean, can't really, can't really hit on this, uh, in regards to what it is, it's a toy, and, uh, as you can see, made in Italy, so, pretty nice little piece, literally the typical Burago wheels of the era, it's got no suspension, very clear windows, which is great, because it gives a glimpse to the interior, which, it's obviously a little bit more detailed than what you'd find in a 164th since it's uh, larger. Wings a little bit crooked on the back on the passenger side. But overall, cool little curio. I love these uh, old Baragos. So that's cool to add to the collection as well. All right, next we will be checking out... Oh, I didn't even know this actually. Uh, I don't know. It's the first uh, time I see this casting. Well, not this casting, but the casting from this brand. Look at this, guys. Viper RT10, first gen Viper from Maisto. Automatically recognizable with those horrible, horrible kind of three spoke wheels. And look at the detail that really got me. Look at this. The Viper is actually embossed into the casting. It's not like a sticker, it's not a tampo, it's literally embossed in there into the metal casting. No front or rear details. You got the little black insert from the interior here, which is something that both Matchbox and Hot Wheels do on this casting as well. Um, definitely the rear is a little bit stubby. Proportions are not that great, but I mean, it's cool to have another Viper, uh, another Viper casting. Steering wheel is way better. Also, strong point that... Um, that uh, you would you would see from Hot Wheels or Matchbox. It's definitely dirty. Again, as usual, when I show off these thrift store finds, they are as found, not clean, not detailed, not anything, just as found. So yeah, I mean, I don't know what I'm gonna do with it exactly, but definitely something cool. I mean, another Viper, first gen Viper, my favorite gen of Viper. All right, next. Um, what do we have here that I could show you next? Oh yeah, picked up another vintage Yatming. Check this out, guys. Uh, complete, fully functional, including suspension. 80s era Yatming, maybe 90s era Yatming. Ferrari. Uh, this actually is where I'm bugging a little bit. I'm trying to figure out if this is a 308 or a 512 Berlinetta Boxer. Seems to be a 512 Berlin at a boxer from the front at least with the the details on the front Yeah, I think it's a 512. I definitely think it's a 512. I actually posted a 512 today on my Instagram So well by the time you view this will probably be like a week ago, but yeah So Berlin at a boxer so with a flat 12 in the back well mid rear and uh, Silver paint some green stripes on there because you know what's more late 80s and early 90s than some random tampos that don't make sense so especially going straight across the lights and uh yeah the bottom ones are actually supposed to be lenses so that 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 makes a whole lot of sense very logical either way this has got a surprising amount of weight and use of the uh cheap plastic base but i mean you can tell it's not a knockoff you know just by the weight of it the it's gonna be another one for the Vintage Yacht Main Collection, which is steadily growing. Um, staying in the vintage realm, I finally found a better condition 
one of these for replacing the seat warmer one that I had as a uh, Mr. Tyrone at building the ultimate matchbox diecast collection likes to say it's a Ertl Turbo Trans Am this would have had the uh what is it 301 Turbo V8 something like that either way small small Turbo V8 catastrophically unreliable but hey you know late 70s effort and uh there you go same exact thing that I had windows are a little bit more clear the A pillars are much straighter although they are not perfect more a little bit more paint than the one that I had that is now going to be off into that lot of miscellaneous die cast and uh yeah plastic base on this one as you can see also made in Hong Kong yeah tarnish base axle's a little bit more rusty on this one but it's still I mean it still rolls fine so but yeah cool uh turbo trans am kind of smoky in the bandit uh, bandit-esque but uh, instead of having the 6.6 .6 liter v8 we're looking at like a, what i think it was a 4.9 liter v8 with a turbo so very cool very very cool happy to get a better condition in one of these because you know vintage hurdles like this especially like dukes of hazard and whatnot very popular um another vintage piece I got this red variation of the um, facelifted uh, ADS Thunderbird. As you can see from the side livery, you have the Thunderbird logo, but more importantly, the turbo coupe. So 2.3 liter Pinto four cylinder with a turbo. Same as the Mustang SVO, same chassis as well. So uh, Fox body chassis for this. Definitely missing a lot of paint. Again, definitely was loved. Old matchbox. Metal base, metal body, T-Bird Turbo Coupe, as you can see, with the 87 license, which is actually the year after this uh, facelifted version came out in 86. It's got lensed rear lights, and I do have a blue variation in slightly better condition of this. Plus, I do have also a green version, but out of the, um, what is it, the World Class Series or Collector Series or something like that. Either way, with the rubber tires, full detailing, and all that good stuff. And yeah, lens the front lights as well. So front lens and rear lens lights, which is pretty cool. Plus the metal on metal. And you got the infamous eight dot wheels, which I love. Because they're just so reminiscent of the cars I wanted when I was a kid. Obviously couldn't get because I was a kid. And my parents would not buy me all the cars that I wanted. Because otherwise I would have had a way more than I actually had. And I had a lot, so... Yeah, so definitely a beater, but cool to have a beater, a decent condition one, and a mint condition one. Um, last, uh, you know, vintage piece and last um, um, car that we're going to check out that's not a Hot Wheels before we get into the Hot Wheels itself. A good old made in France majorette. This is a Morgan, I believe, plus eight. Just written Morgan underneath, and uh, you know, obviously, it's an opening hood to see if it's the Rover V8 or the little four cylinder. But based on the vents, I'm assuming it would be the three and a half liter uh, V8. So, this in the top, which pretty much all of these do if they're uh, not on card. Uh, however, windshield is there, which most don't have when they're not on card, and the paint is, I'd say, what 85% there with a few flea bites here and there, but pretty much all across the board. Again, metal base, very shiny. As you can see, made in France, 150th scale, this one. Because Morgans like this were very small cars, and they actually still had a Ashwood chassis, so which is a cool little curio. Chrome steering wheel, air that passes through it and uh, gives itself uh, to these little chrome inserts there. Overall, a very nice casting. You know, pretty sure I'll never find a top for this, but hey, you know what? It's the most complete one I've ever found so far, so I won't complain there. So these are like the more beater slash junker type of pieces I'm keeping. Getting into the Hot Wheels, interesting piece actually that uh, I found. Wasn't sure if I wanted to keep this or not, but check this out, guys. 
It's a fantasy casting. It's a pickup. Got the uh, Psycho Smasher on the side, I'm assuming. Maybe that's the name of the casting. But what's really cool about this casting is that metal on metal, you can probably see it's screwed in place. And if you actually, yeah, here you go. Look at this, poof. It's kind of it's kind of like reminds me of the um, what what were they called again? The uh, crack ups. The bed folds. The hood pops off. You can see a big blown V eight underneath the hood. And then basically you can just put it back together. I've never seen one of these before, and please do let me know in the comments what the heck this thing is. It's in really, really good condition, except for a bent axle up front, so I mean, it's easy fix. At the end of the day, it's got the big yellow five spokes. And uh, you know what? I was I was gonna give it away, but this is just too cool. I gotta keep it. I gotta keep it, so there you go. Um, next up, oh yeah, casting I didn't have, but you know, it was in there, so why not keep it, especially if Pretty good condition. Good old combat, me combat medic. This had so many spin-offs as a food truck, a mail truck, uh, you know, all kinds of different usages. You know, it's just classic Hot Wheels cast and, you know, good to have. This one has the Hot Wheels speedy delivery on there. Pretty cool. You know, a little delivery truck. And uh, this had the uh, opening doors in the back, which are both there, so... That's always cool when, you know, I don't mind uh, casting with flea bites or scratches or tampo wear, as long as it's complete, you know? And uh, yeah, I won't play too much with those doors because the driver's side one, I feel like the hinge on top is not popped into place correctly, so I do not want those to break or fall or whatnot. So, very simplistic front end. I'm going to try and resist detailing it, but, you know, you know how that goes, right? So, there you go. Now, we're going to be falling into my top five finds for this um, specific haul. So, number five. Starting from the bottom, going to the top. I've got this uh, slightly worn, but still cool, recent release... Um, Forza Motorsport branded McLaren P1 in red. A bunch of, you know, well, not a bunch, but a few uh, a few little sponsors. So, like a track car. Extremely filthy. Remnants of, I don't know what the heck that is there. Black 10 spokes. And, uh, you know, this is a good casting. It did lose its rear tampos because of the livery, but, you know, it's kind of cool. The only one I have out of this set is actually the... Um, Bugatti EB110, so it's kind of cool to add a second one that, uh, you know, it's not the best cast from Hot Wheels, but it's definitely a, a car in real life that I do like. All right, number four. Uh, this is the first one of these that I actually get, uh, except for a really older first release one, a uh, Roger Dodger. So... The Valentine's Day livery. I've seen this uh, pop up on card and loose and whatnot. I had a lot of, you know, I had a few uh, a few thrift stores and things like that or online uh, diecast store that sell hot, older Hot Wheels. Um, so, yeah, it's a, the wheels are worn, but the rest is mint. So, and it's kind of cool. You know, I probably will recolor the wheels, maybe in gold or something. I kind of gold would look great with the uh, with the the metallic um, kind of slightly orangish red, and um, the around the Valentine's Day, as you can see, there's a little bit of a gold detailing there. So I, I, I'm probably gonna redo these five spokes in gold just to make it make it my own. You know, but uh, great cast. You know, based on the '73 four Challenger. With a uh, stretched front end and a heck of a big blown V8 with eight side pipes, open headers basically, chrome interior, and here's your base. 
there you go. Original copyright 70, and then redone in 15. So, Malaysia base in black plastic. All right, number three. And speaking of classics, now this is what you call a classic. Um, you got this uh, 56 Ford pickup here. The name escapes me. What is this again? Uh, the name totally escapes me for now, but look at look how cool this is. It's got both the bikes all complete, no missing parts. Still even got the little handlebars and all that good stuff in the most common blue livery. Obviously very, you know, flea bites and whatnot. Got the black wall wheels, little flame uh, tampos on the root on the hood. Oh, what is this again? Oh, I don't remember the name. So sorry, guys. I, 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 and I saw this in the bag and I was like, oh, it's the, you know, whatever it's called, you know. I know this. I know the name of this, but it's just escaping me for now. But, you know, it's complete. It's got most of its paint. It's great color. It's nicely beat up, kind of like a shop truck. And, uh, you know, the two bikes are still there and complete. So, I mean, totally worth it in my opinion. All right. And the last two cars are actually Hot Wheels Premiums. I'm just going to start with the Silhouette Series Porsche 935. Bilstein Goodyear PPG, the 76. Obviously the Porsche right here. And the blue aero disc, white and blue paint. Mind you, this is not mint. It does have few scrapes on the front uh, front lip as well as right here a little flea bite there as for the rest it's pretty complete all the tampo works all there and pretty much mint but I mean this is a casting I really wanted that I did not have in the collection so 935 Porsche from Hot Wheels Premium definitely cool and last but most certainly not least Look, look at what was in this bag, guys. Silhouette Series Porsche RWB 930. The Rawelt instead of the Stella Artois, because obviously you can't put a beer brand on a toy, right? Again, definitely not mint. Look at those big chips on the front lip there. But I mean, you know, it's a rough world. That's what happens. A couple chips here and there. But I mean, these things on card go for like crazy money. Well, crazy money. You know, I've seen uh, some people are, you know, being fair selling them for about 25 bucks. But I mean, I've seen this go up, uh, over 50 bucks easy on card, on a, on a mint card. So I have the team transport with the purple version. So happy to have the black one loose. And, uh, you know, despite the missing paint here and there and whatnot, I mean... Should be fairly easy to touch up first and foremost. And I mean, paint chips on this kind of car, I mean, it kind of works. I mean, it just shows that it was used, in my opinion, at least. So definitely cool, cool finds. We're going to end off by checking out a few main lines quickly. So you, you can see them all stacked there. So we'll check them out one at a time. We've got this uh, really cool Audi RS e-tron GT. Um, I already have the gray variation. I had picked up originally the first release red one, which I got rid of as part of a, a trade or sale. I don't remember. Uh, got the white on white, it, really just to crack it open. And um, yeah, I'm a sucker for white, white paint, white wheels. It just works. So this one, we'll crack it open right away. I got a crappy card, uh, crappy condition card anyways because i knew i'd be cracking it open but i wanted one of these open because well, plug and go i like it it's just a uh, they hot wheels does an amazing job with audis amazing job tampos where they count and this color combo is just beautiful so i'm happy to have one of these loose i have the gray version on a short card so this is a really cool cool vehicle you know it looks good. I'm not, you know, a big fan of electric cars, but this this looks cool. I really like this car. It's classy. Just leave that profile there. 
Uh, the other main lines are not going to be cracking open though. Um, one here that uh, I had not stumbled upon yet from this case. Beautiful GT40. This is a Mark I from the absence of the extra vents on the top here, which would be typical Mark II with this, this same body shape, and after that it changes. The Mark III was a streetcar, Mark IV, well, it was a Ryu design that's been done um, on Hot Wheels in several colors, namely red, yellow, and golf blue. This one is a real livery. This is a livery that actually was applied, not you know exactly the same, but the number eight, the black hood, the, the black stripes, and the white paint, definitely. Good choice of wheels with the five spokes in black with the chrome ring. No rear deco, which is kind of typical of a car that's got all the rest of the deco there. And you always get lights on these because they're part of the top pass, which is great. So happy to add this because um, besides the golf livery of this, I don't think I have one carded. And, uh, you know, the background behind uh, the rest of this stuff. I do have the Gumball 3000 then and now. Well, the then of the then and now. It's uh over there that you can probably see on my videos so um next we have volkswagen t2 pickup very cool um yeah not sure i like the front bumper honestly especially from the card art kind of looks like a freaking body kit with lambo or lambo aventador design venting but you know whatever overall on the casting it actually looks better because it's all white very cool matte paint job i love these aero discs when they black out the lip and they keep the center chrome because they look like oversized matchbox steelies which works so well on these kind of casts of course you've got the engine in the rear in black chrome white plastic base and that black chrome interior so this is cool because the only version of this i had is not on card it's loose and it's the regular version in uh, that uh, burnt orange with the yellow and red stripe that was actually a super but yeah mainline version of that that was also a thrift store find by the way last of the hollows mainline finally got this guy i mean i cannot resist a new color variation of the uh, r30 skyline is the RS Turbo. Uh, this one's a little bit less for the purist and a little bit more for the custom, custom car kind of guy. Always got those fantastic rear details. Gold 10 spokes to bring out the gold uh, in this livery. And of course, it's got lensed fronts, so no front temples, but it doesn't really matter you know, with the black from the base. And uh, of course, right hand drive and uh yeah just overall great casting great great casting very happy to get this and there was like four others of these obviously no gold civic because i mean here up in montreal quebec any type of honda casting is immediately picked up because well we love our compacts and our hatchbacks uh, our hatchbacks in quebec so there you go also picked up the only color variation of the 3000 GT from Matchbox that I was missing in blue. I mean, variation number four for Matchbox in my collection, including the yellow premium that uh, you saw in my previous video or the one before. Either way, same same difference, same tamper work. Five spoke wheels, which is reminiscent of the premium version, the collector version. And they didn't forget on this one to actually put the little diamond star uh, motors license plate on the back so very nice cast very nice proportions i won't take up too much time on this one because i've reviewed that cast a, few, a couple times already last but not least probably notice from the side here we all know what's in this pack volkswagens so we'll end off with that this is going to be another pack i think that i'm going to be keeping closed it's funny because the last video i did show you um five pack the gdm five pack from matchbox i'm keeping closed and the only nine pack i have from matchbox the bottom right car is exactly this casting the baja beetle but um 
or the Beetle 4x4, should I say, that's what Matchbox calls it, um, in a different livery, like in brown metallic. This one's kind of like a very light, like lime green gloss. Is it gloss? Actually, no, it's matte. The white wheels, the white off-road wheels, they look great, Park Patrol livery. I find it looks really good in this casting. I mean, I'm starting to have a lot of these. I do have it also in golf livery. Maybe another one somewhere. I don't know. At least three of these now. So, you know, it's part of the five pack. I'm going to keep it as is because the sealed all Volkswagen five pack is definitely cool. Um, then we have castings that are going to get more and more interesting. T2, T2 Microbus in red. Good looking, good looking cast. Good looking cast. There we go. Got the front details as you can see. Got the rear details as well that you can barely see. And you got the pop-up roof. Nice gloss red. Steelies. And we move to the cast that I wanted out of this. The Carmen Ghia. Because this is one that I did not have. A cast from Matchbox. The Carmen Ghia Coupe. I only have the convertible and silver from the Power Grab. So nice uh, gloss orange on this one. Very period color. Looks great. Same wheels as the T2. Then we have the Mark, Mark V GTI in purple, metallic. You can't go wrong with a purple metallic car. And, you know, this casting again, very well made. This is, I believe, number three now in the collection since I got rid of the black one uh, that I sent over to uh, Jake at the Strictly Diecast and as part of the little care package. And finish off with the least interesting casting and most appliance looking Volkswagen that's currently being sold, the ID4. So nothing to say about that one except it's electric and it's not my cup of tea. So there you go. Really nice, really nice five pack that is going to stay sealed. So on that, hopefully you did enjoy this little showcase. I'll try and make a nice clean line of different finds here and uh there you go so on that uh i'll let you go hopefully you enjoyed this uh longer than expected showcase if you did uh hit that thumbs up leave a comment subscribe uh, if you want to be notified of future uploads and of course uh, happy hunting all the best of luck and stay safe out there catch you on the next one take care